What's going on guys, this is Bruce Matson, your host of Metric Scout Fantasy Football, and we're going to be covering Marquez Callaway, who broke out last night for the Saints against the Jacksonville Jaguars in their preseason game, and a lot of people are not aware of him or know what he's about, but he's an undrafted free agent from Tennessee, he's been in the Saints system for a bit. And now he's getting some opportunity to prove himself in the offense. They have some injuries at the wide receiver position. Obviously, Michael Thomas, Tregon Smith has been dinged up as well. But he looked good catching two touchdown passes. Obviously, kind of looks the part with his size and all. But why did he fall in the draft? Why haven't people heard of him? Well, one thing, he wasn't super productive in college. He did break out at age 19 with a 33% dominator rating, but from a market share standpoint, it was less than what we needed for a requisite perspective for a high-end wide receiver prospect. However, he was in the Tennessee system. That's suspect as, a, as it is because Tennessee is more like the Michigan of the South, how they deal with prospects. Not the fair go when it comes to overall wide receiver production. He had 635 receiving yards during his senior season. And actually, his best year was in 2018 when he had 592 receiving yards. That was his highest market share on yards. It wasn't like he wasn't productive at all. He wasn't in an offense that couldn't fuel him, of course, but we would have liked to see a larger ownership of the offensive production, if anything else. Usually, even if you're in a bad offense, if you are a stud wide receiver prospect, you have a high ownership of the offensive production, at least 20-30% market share, 25-ish at least. And then when it comes to his athletic specs, that's also where it kind of dinks him in that category. He's six foot one, 205 pounds, more on the 6'2 range, and ran a 4.55. So it's not the most athletically gifted prospect. He's around the 50th percentile when it comes to size adjusted speed score. So when you look at athleticism, those traits, production profile you can see why he fell out of the draft and was undrafted but that doesn't mean he's a bad player it means he had some things to work on and when you go back to his tape at Tennessee you can see there are some good things some good traits that with a little bit of love and care could translate to a good wide receiver at the NFL level from a fantasy football perspective when I look at Marquez Callaway I wouldn't be jumping at the bit to get him but I would have him as like a flyer on your team, a late target, just see what happens. He's a guy that can easily drop for another player. The sunk cost is low. If you have guys in your league willing to overpay for him just because of what they saw last night, let them do it because the upside may not be there. Well, Jameis Winston does want to chuck the ball deep. That's why he's a 30 for 30 guy when it comes to touchdowns and interceptions because he loves to throw the yellow balls. And that's not good for efficiency. That's not good for real football, but that's great for fantasy football. That's that's great for us wanting those wide receivers to get a little bit added production. That's what we like about Marquez Callaway. He's got a little bit of rapport there with Jameis. You saw that last night. He could take on a larger A dot, larger average at the target and take advantage of that, but at the same instance, he's still a flyer that you want to hit your wagon to, and you do not want to take him for granted as a piece that's certain to hit. But let's take a look at some of his tape. Let's see what he's about. Let's look at his college film, and let's look at some of the stuff he did last night. All right, guys, before we dig into tape right now, if you enjoy the content, if you've been watching these videos, subscribe and ring the bell. Helps me out a lot. Allows me to keep going with this content for you guys. But we're going to backtrack to college right now just to um, give you more content of what he is as a player. At the NFL level, we got a small sample. We only have a few plays to pull from. So we're going to look at some of his college tape right now. This play right here, though, you're going to see a breakdown on some of his route running, how he looks like on his cuts. He's at the top of your screen, over by the numbers here, down up by the sideline. And we're going to see his release off the line of scrimmage. You see him attacking deep, attacking deep, and breaks to the inside pretty easily. And he's looking back, 
And why he's doing that, he does in and up the field. So he's selling his route here by looking back towards the quarterback. Pretty detailed for, for a college guy, especially playing in Tennessee system. And it cuts up field and wins. So let's see what the defense is doing when he's doing it. So he's looking back. See that safety back there bites on it and runs up. The corner's looking in to see what's going on. They're both thinking that ball's going to come to him soon. And the safety's out of position. He's screwed. He wins the route. This is a good eye by the quarterback. He knows he around here. Like he's getting ready to draw back. He knows around here that he's got that safety beat. That's a good read. And and that's all she said. That is it. And he's gone off the races. Beats that DB. DB closes the gap a little bit, but it's fine. So good approach off the line. Um, goes in a bit and it runs it up. That sell by the look back is what caught that safety and allowed him to win the play. Here's another play we're going to look at. So he's here at the bottom of the screen um, fighting press coverage. He's at the far bottom. You can barely see him. But he's going to be fighting press coverage. He's going to try to get off the line here. And you want to notice the catch pretty much on this play. So he's fighting press. He wins pretty quick. Um, strong hands, of course. Gets down, makes his break. You can barely see the break, but he makes his break pretty good. Creates separation. That earns him the target. And I like how he catches the ball with his hands right there. The ball's away from his body. He catches it with his hands. You see this a lot in his tape. He catches the ball away from his body. He has strong hands. We saw that last night in his preseason game against Jacksonville. How good he is at bringing in the football. This is a play that shows that it's not a big time play it's not a play that blows your socks off of course but you're seeing him bring in the pass right here over the middle he's created some separation but he knows there's guys coming in at him that's a catch that some guys drop some guys drop that but he's able to bring that in cross his body not across his body but away from his body brings it in and is able to make a play there so another good play Another thing that I like about this game is the strong hands. All right, we got a red zone situation here. He's at the top of your screen. He's going to be catching a jump ball. And I just want to show you what this play looks like. And he gets off the line. And this is pretty much just a, a jump fade. Ball's in the air. Out jumps this guy. High points it. See the extension? See the extension? And brings in the catch. This guy has just got good ball tracking ability. He uses his size well. And strong hands. If that ball hits his hands, he's bringing it in. We saw that last night. He makes good acrobatic catches and strong around the red zone. That's what I like about his game. There's another attribute that the Saints could be using out of him this season. All right, here's a close look of last night's catch off the replay. We all saw this last night. Everyone did. But here's Callaway looking, looking, looking for the grab. He's got two guys on his back pretty much. He's falling forward. And look at the concentration here. That is a tough grab to make. And he brings it in. And that's what he's good at. He's bringing in those tough catches. He's got strong arms, strong hands, and very focused at the ball coming in at him. He's aggressive at the catch point too. That allows him to make some of these plays. Very underrated when it comes to his ball tracking and him just being able to bring in the catch at the catch point. Okay, another play I'm going off of from last night was the touchdown grab. So Winston, very quick read here. Drops back, pops it. You notice he's got his man beat right here. You're even, you're leaving. And he's a little bit ahead of the dude. And ball tracking is there tracks it down rises up a little bit to make the catch in the end zone we don't get to see how he really won off the release or how he stacked the dude but this dude stacked legit like right when we're in frame there a little bit past even there with the db so you know he's got him and winston knew that instantly i wonder what was going on here when he looked back here like 
instantly and he knew where the ball's going. So this is where he won, or at least previously have won on that play. And Winston saw it, drops back a little bit more, let it happen. And bang. Good ball by Winston. He was slinging deep balls. This is what the marriage with Jamin Winston and Callaway is going to look like. It's just him attacking downfield. Verticals all day long. And if Callaway gets run in the offense, this is how he can be a contributor in fantasy. Getting those air yards, those deep targets. If he gets a couple of game, reels in one here and there, he may be a volatile guy with spike weeks. And that's something you want with your later picks. Uh, if you're one of those dudes who are lucky to nab him in drafts February, May, March, earlier this year, lucky for you because you got a guy who just rose in value due to a preseason game who's looking to get a nice run of snaps this year. Traquan Smith still on the offense. Michael Thomas should be coming back. So there will be competition but right now, Callaway has the opportunity to prove himself. And we're going to see what happens with that. But right now, it looks like he has enough skills to be able to take advantage of his opportunities. But that's it. That's all I got for you today. I want to thank you for watching the show. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. Every subscriber helps the channel grow. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.